stop by and talk about some things that are going on socially that are relevant specifically to the black community uh, you guys know that while I do the things I do from a business perspective my passion is always in helping people starting with my people and so when I see things I want to share it I want to give you what I invest my energy time and passion in to learning and mastering. Don't forget, by the way, uh, to get book number 22, uh, The Undoing of the African-American Mind. Uh, definitely you wanna get that. You wanna check that out. This, the link will be in the description box of this video. Definitely order that. Now, there's even a bundle where you can get Born in Captivity, uh, at, which is the, pre uh, the preceding book or the predecessor to uh, the undoing of the African American mind. So definitely check that out. Also, don't forget, we definitely need you to support the work that we're doing in the community. We also want you to support. Remember, we were doing a fundraiser uh, to set up this 15 city tour where we're going to go into communities across America and literally set up the programs that I have designed and been running for years. Uh, and I want to do it at no charge to those communities. So it's going to take a national effort to fund. And so we are asking for the support. As of right now, we've gotten, I may think, maybe $100 total. We've been doing it for over a month. Uh, you know, I'm, while I'm used to that, the thing is we really got, got to get better than that, guys. Uh, but I'm not going to harp on that right now. I want to talk about some things. Uh, I put up a video a couple of days ago about the shooting of Jacob Blake and why um, I think it's important uh, that we are respond effectively and some of the things to watch out for I talked about. Uh, I don't like the fact that Benjamin Crump's involved and, and immediately that gets followed up with the almost expected apology by the mother of the victim who is actually still alive the last I heard and probably paralyzed for life with a several spinal cord. Uh, he's, he's had the vast majority of his small intestines removed. He's got some liver and kidney damage. Uh, he's in bad shape, but he is still alive last I heard. Um, and I got some people uh, that hopped on talking about his record, specifically uh, something to do with being uh, convicted of rape. Now, I want to address that because I want to be very clear on who I am and what I stand for. I shouldn't have to do this as long as I've been doing this. I don't think that there is a man out there. There may be some women, but I don't think there's a man out there that has advocated for the black woman and black children the way I have. I don't think there have been times that black women have come to me and said, bro, you're going, hard, you're going too hard on black men. You know, ease up on them a little bit. I've literally had that happen because that's how adamant and passionate I am about providing a safe space for our women and my motto has been we've got to learn how to love our women back to life uh, it doesn't matter if we believe our women are living up to some certain expectation you got to understand what got them there you got to understand it at a level that allows you to be strong enough to move my whole thing is manhood shouldn't allow you to be intimidated by a woman no matter what she's at doesn't mean she's ready to be married if she's got some healing to do but you shouldn't be intimidated your leadership is not in your ability to control or manipulate her your leadership is in your ability to provide a safe and an, a safe environment uh, that's so safe and conducive to her healing that she actually inherently starts to lean into you and she acquiesces to your leadership, not because you're better than her, but because she trusts you. And that's what I've always talked about. That's what I've always pushed for. That's what I've always wanted from our men is to create these safe spaces that is lacking in so many ways. And so I've advocated. So the idea that I don't care 
about somebody uh, who uh, may harm a woman is absolutely ludicrous. Now, what I can say is I didn't know at the time that that was a conviction. I still haven't been able to find it. I've heard it floating around, but whenever I'm actually researching what happened to him and what's going on, I haven't seen it in mainstream media and they love to throw stuff up when it's one of us that's gotten shot to show why it's okay for us to die. Now, I, uh, I have no room in my heart for anyone who causes harm, not just rape uh, or molestation, but any type of harm to a black woman or a child or the elderly, none whatsoever. However, what we have to be careful about is how it is a common thing to pull the past of blacks after they've been wrongfully killed or maimed and say, well, they deserve it. My whole thing is this. First and foremost, there are too many black men walking out of prison damn near every day after being exonerated for 35 years, primarily for rapes and some homicide, but primarily for rapes. Excuse me. But, um, sorry about that, y'all. But anyway, uh, primary for, primarily for rape after DNA has proven that they didn't do it, uh, after witnesses recanted testimony, uh, and so many going on. There are a bunch of people who are locked up behind false allegations. We've seen that. So that doesn't automatically mean, and I'm not his lawyer, I'm not trying to sit up there and get him off of anything. If he did it, then hopefully if he's out, he's served his time, he's did his time. Uh, hopefully he's a changed man. Uh, but I have no room in my heart. Uh, I'm not big on forgiveness for that shit. But at the same point in time, I understand that things happen and people change. But I didn't make that uh, video with an understanding of him being a person who harmed women. Now, I made that video because what I heard was he was trying to stop two black women from fighting and he was going to his car because his kids had gotten upset and started crying. And he was walking to his car to check on his kids. That's the story that's still ringing in mainstream media. I've checked a number of different sites and until I see something different, that is what I'm standing on. Again, I think I've done enough over the, since, since the, the, the landing of YouTube, I think I've done enough to show how I go hard in the paint for our sisters. So the, any idea or suggestion that I have no love for our sisters or I don't care or I'm okay with cats harming our sisters, I'm the one that's saying they need to be put out if they harm our sisters. So you can't say that about me, but at the same time, you're not going to use that as an excuse, especially when I know some of the people that are on the page doing it aren't even black. And I can't stand, I, I want to make this extremely clear, I can't stand cowards. You want to call me out on my page with no picture, no real name. I go to Yo Darn Gone YouTube uh, channel. You got one subscriber, two subscribers, no videos. Up. You've put in no work. Whether it's to oppose my view or not, you've put no work in. Meaning you've done no research. You're just spewing anger and hatred and vitriol and ignorance. And you show up on my page. My number one thing is to start blocking because it's not even worth my time trying to argue. But I, I, I wanted to address that because I know some people saw it before I did. I addressed it on the comment, but for the people who saw it, I wanted to come out and address exactly where I stand on this. My thing is, his kids seeing that didn't care about what he used to do. He was daddy and he had them with him and they watched him shot. He could have died in front of them. All of the people who have seen that video and been traumatized by it, it's not going to matter to them that he is or is not a convicted rapist. They saw a black man shot seven times in the back. And like I say, I don't care what the circumstances are. Last time I checked, when I grew up, the cold, the hood, no matter what, shooting somebody or stabbing somebody in the back is an act of cowardice. If you feel like somebody's done something, if you one of them people that say, man, I ain't having it, any cat that does this, I'm taking out, 
You need to be looking them in the eyes when you do it. That's what men do. They confront the issues head on, face to face. They don't walk up and shoot them from behind. So that's my issue. It stays my issue. It remains my issue. Now, back to this whole Benjamin Crump thing. We've got to stop letting it be okay to do to 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 to, to use the demise of our people at the hands of race soldiers as a chance to get the bag and then turn around and release them from any culpability or accountability for their actions. I'm sick and tired of seeing parents and, and, and siblings and, 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 and sick and tired of seeing all these family members forgiving we haven't even dealt with, we don't even know the outcome of your relative's health and you've already forgiven the police officer. The, mental, the mentality and mindset behind that is ridiculous. It, it, it's, it's a slavery mentality that has to show master, literally. This is a slave mentality. Anytime master did something the master of the overseer did something to the slave, it was nat natural for the slave to immediately let the master know they weren't holding any ill feelings because they knew what came with the ill feelings. So that's what I'm what I'm talking about. It's this whole idea that, you know, we're still going around trying to let white people know we're not mad at them not because we are not mad at them but because there's this thing of worrying about what can happen if they think we're mad at them we are going to have to do a better job it's that simple there's no other way around it we are going to have to do a better job i'm uh arriving at my uh destination so i'm about to end this video but the benjamin crump thing the secure in the bag. I'm not saying we're not supposed to get paid. We need to hurt them financially. But we can't allow us being paid to turn down the tension. We are not being paid to turn down the tension. We are being paid because you took something of value from us. And while there's no price tag on back black life, we're going to take as much from you as we possibly can as a down payment on the pain you've caused. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the state of mind that I'm in. So I'm about to get off of here and uh, sit down with baby girl, uh, Marion, and do some things. But other than that, we're going to get back to you. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a chance to check in live with you guys today. I need to do a live stream with you. It's been a minute. Uh, but I wanted to drop this on you. Uh, you guys have a great day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.